the fourth event of the ORF and Telecap speaker series. Our earlier three events were on the inf informal labor in India, healthcare in Pakistan, and skill development. The Future of the Urban Poor is a six-part series that aims to advance knowledge sharing on urban issues that impact the poor. The series will bring together key stakeholders, experts, and practitioners from India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, working on innovative development initiatives in the urban context to inspire new ideas and work towards action. The Future of the Urban Poor is hosted by ORF with IntelliCap and is supported by the Rockefeller Foundation. Today we have amongst us two very distinguished speakers, Mr. Ramesh Ramanathan and Mr. Surendra Srivastava. I'd like to give them a vote of thanks for coming over here and uh, welcoming them here to ORF. I'll just say a little bit about our speakers. Mr. Ramesh Ramanathan is co-founder of Janagraha Center for Citizenship and Democracy, a non-profit organization focused on improving urban governance in India. In addition to Janagraha, Mr. Ramanathan has worked in the Indian microfinance sector for almost a decade with a special focus on urban microfinance. He is the chairman of Janalakshmi, an urban microfinance institution in India. Mr. Ramanathan works closely with the government on urban issues in a pro bono capacity. He is also the leading architect of the model Nagar Raj Bill of 2008. His current positions with the government include being the national technical advisor to the government of India for the Jawaharlal Nehru National Urban Renewal Mission, the largest urban initiative in the country's history, the principal advisor to the state urban agenda for the state of Rajasthan, and a member of the High Powered Expert Committee on Urban Finances. Mr. Ramanathan has an MS in Physics from Bits Pilani, an MBA from Yale University, and a Certified Financial Analyst degree from the Association of Investment Management and Research. Prior to these social initiatives, Mr. Ramanathan worked with Citibank in New York and London, heading their derivatives department, collectively running a business with an annual revenue of over $1 billion. Mr. Surendra Srivastava heads the Lok Satta Party in Maharashtra. He is a corporate executive by training, but in public service by choice. Mr. Srivastava started his career as a clerk at the Great Eastern Shipping Company and rose to become the president of the company. In his pursuit to reform politics and governance in India, he has devoted himself to Lok Satta. Lok Satta has a variety of political goals, including the political, economic, and social equality for all people making citizens the center of governance, and to reform government, making it less corrupt, more accessible, and responsible to the people. I now invite my colleague, Sh uh, Shilpa. She's going to say a little bit about ORF and the work that we do in the space of urban renewal. Thanks, Abba. Actually, with respect to our commitment to urban renewal issues at ORF Mumbai, as some of you might know, and most of you might know, ORF Mumbai is a nonpartisan, independent public policy think tank, and we essentially engage in research and policy advocacy on six different issues that we've chosen to focus on, them being education, health, urban renewal, which is what I'll be speaking a little bit about today, inclusive development, youth development, and last but not the least, promotion and preservation of India's heritage, arts, and culture. Now, with respect to advocacy, we engage on a regular basis with all the issues that we, that we do research on through three ways, primarily three ways, events and lectures, one-off events and lectures, speaker series such as the one we're attending right now, and roundtable discussions. And all of these feed into the work that we do and help us enhance our knowledge in many, many different ways. So I'll give you an idea about the research reports that we have published in the past, primarily with respect to urban renewal. So this is just a small part of what we do. We do a lot more. This is the most recent report that we published, Moving People, Not Cars, Why Mumbai Needs the BRTS. In order to understand this issue better, we drew a lot of learnings from different, in different ways. The primary learning was from a roundtable that we conducted on BRTS jointly with uh, Embark in March 2010. We took and distilled a lot of learnings from key policy recommendations from transport policies, comprehensive transport surveys, and transport and infrastructure budget documents of the state government, 
consultations with traffic and transport stalwarts from various institutions like the Mumbai Environmental Support Network and most, pro most importantly, MVAC, a very good friend of ORF Mumbai. And last but not the least, international and domestic experiences with implementing this very challenging mass public transport system of BRT. The report puts forth very concrete recommendations for the government to facilitate the implementation of a BRTS system in Mumbai, and we strongly advocate the creation of an empowered unified metropolitan transport authority for the entire Mumbai metropolitan region. After a successful launch of this report on the 4th of October, at another roundtable conference we conducted on sustainable transport, we realized that we want to take this a little bit further, take this to the next level, and if possible, with partners such as MESN and Embark who helped us with the report to make this and of course citizens and civil society organizations who are so actively involved in this to make it more of a people's movement rather than just a report and just a research study because this is something that fundamentally affects every citizen in Mumbai and uh, it requires much much more attention road-based mass public transport systems so that's the hope this is another effort that we all as a team are very proud of the MITI now, the title of the report is Making the Sewer a River Again, Why Mumbai Must Reclaim Its Miti. With this project, we took a unique approach. So not only did we publish English and Marathi versions of the report that we made, but we also went ahead and produced a detailed documentary film highlighting the key takeaways of the report. And as we noticed along the way, this was sometimes much better received than the written document itself. So the objective of this study was to research and to narrate to the readers and viewers the true story of this river and the, the part it's played, played in Mumbai's history right from the 3rd century BC. And most importantly, to remove the stereotype that's normally associated with it of being responsible for the deluge in 2005. The report studies the role of the river, particularly before the British era, and its subsequent degradation and exploitation due to haphazard and indiscriminate reclamation of land and unplanned growth over the last century. The report takes a very close look at national and international best practices with riverfront development, and we've evolved a basic and a grand vision for the river, which we believe has the potential to transfer this into a real public asset for the citizens of Mumbai. So the launch of the report was unique. We launched it right in the middle of the mangroves, in, the middle, in, in, in one of the most uh, uh, ecologically sensitive areas of the Mithi River. And we also screened the film at Mahim Nature Park, which is situated along the banks of the river, and it was very well received by media. The media coverage helped us generate a lot of sustained interest from very key government representatives, including the Chief Minister of Maharashtra, MCGM, MMRDA, institutions like Terry and pollution control boards, and most importantly, lately, international institutions like the UN Habitat and the Project for Public Spaces have taken a keen interest in this cause. And most importantly, like I said, the movie proved to be a very powerful tool to spread awareness among Mumbaikers. And as we've seen in the past few weeks, we've also been screening these films in schools. And we see that it's being very well received by school children and teachers. And we want to take this to the next step with, next step with BMC schools, and especially to encourage children to go and do more site visits along the river and to really understand and see what the precious ecosystem around it that we have. Right. The next report I'm going to speak about is the second airport, why Mumbai must learn from international experiences. ORF Mumbai published this report, which was actually authored by Sri Hormuz P. Mama, a noted expert in civil aviation and a very dear friend of ORF, to highlight the urgent need for a second airport in Mumbai. Through this paper and a subsequent roundtable that we organized, we as an institution strongly endorsed his views that the state government must act quickly to commission the construction of a second airport, which is at par with international standards. However, ORF continues to remain neutral about the location of the second airport. The report was launched at the round table, and it was very well attended by, by members from our partner organization in this event, Bombay First, and experts from the civil aviation industry, and representatives from top airline companies. The subject being one that's extremely controversial and extremely important, did generate a lot of media buzz. Affordable housing uh, for Mumbai's poor is possible. In August 2010, we conducted a roundtable with various multidisciplinary stakeholders to engage in a very detailed, and deba detailed debate and discussion on this whole issue of affordable housing and why is it such an elusive dream in a city like Mumbai. This report is a compilation of the learnings distilled from this roundtable 
as well as several interviews that we conducted with government representatives, real estate consultants, housing activists, and housing policy experts. It's a compilation of the key issues that are affecting the sector today, and we have provided some policy recommendations which we believe have the potential to kickstart the affordable housing sector in private and public spheres. The report was and continues to be well received by the government, as well as the Comptroller and Auditor General Office, and the private sector industry body of housing in Maharashtra, the MCHI, the Maharashtra Chambers of Housing Industry. This was the first report that ORF Mumbai published. It was released in April 2010. ORF took it upon itself the task of serving the sanitation provisions along the Mumbai Suburban Railway Network, which covered 109 suburban stations across the central, western, and harbour lines. To conduct the surveys, we partnered with a very dear friend and a very and a very earnest community-based organization called Triratna Perna Mandal. It is an, this, this study is essentially a non-partisan, independent investigation of the state of sanitation across the Mumbai suburban train stations. And we've also suggested ways and means to help the Indian railways identify areas where it can truly make improvements, which can make a difference. We believe that one of the biggest victories of this study was the culmination into a public interest litigation filed in the Bombay High Court on the abysmal condition of lavatories, urinals, toilets, and drinking water supply points in railway stations across the city. This PIL seeks that the budget for the sanitation at the central and western stations be increased and also suggests a committee to be formed to look into the recommendations made by our report and the findings and recommendations made by our report. Just a little bit about the partners that we worked with, Tri Ratna Perana Mandal. They have an inspirational journey from its origins in a really small slum in Santa Cruz West. The Mandal was formed primarily with the objective of improving conditions of local sanitation in Santa Cruz West, but then TPM has now become the medium for an extraordinary socio-economic and environmental revolution in the area. Some of the areas of that TPM focuses on including garbage collection, segregation in Santa Cruz, a computer skills development center, compost production, a midday meal scheme, tailoring and spoken English classes for women, and many more. It's, it's our effort to reach out to organizations like this who've been working on the ground on a day-to-day -day basis and actually making a difference. And we want, to do, we want to have many more of these partnerships in our work going forward. A little bit about our forthcoming reports, which we are all very excited about. I'll start with the Maharashtra Nature Park, which is, which is titled Wilderness in the City. I spoke a little bit about this earlier. The Maharashtra Nature Park, which is also referred to as the Mahin Nature Park, is situated on the edge of an ecologically critical estuarine mudflats of the Miti River, with the glass and concrete edifices of BKC surrounding it on one side, standing tall and proud. This, we believe, is a veritable sanctuary, which not only is a hub and a bed for, uh, for many flora and fauna, fauna to flourish, but we believe it has the potential to become another extremely vital public space for the city of Mumbai, of which we know there is a desperate need. The primary aim of the study is to identify the causes of the park's degradation, encroachment, and the severe underutilization of the resources that it has currently, and to build an advocacy movement to revive this as a symbol of a democratic public space. Slum Rehabilitation Authority, a reality check. This is essentially a report to conduct an investigation on the whole concept of free housing that has become so popular in Mumbai, free housing for the urban poor and for slum dwellers, and the various intended and unintended detrimental effects it's had on the real estate market and the affordable housing market. Time is running out. Is Mumbai's water crisis over? has been critically reviewed by, and also includes a foreword in an essay by Sri Madhav Rao Chittale, who is the chief, fact -finding com who is the chief of the fact-finding fact committee appointed to investigate the Mumbai floods of 2005. We highlight the city municipal corporation's failure to provide clean drinking water and the dire state of the city's water distribution network. We've also drawn a lot of lessons from international and domestic best practices on water management in cities, and we really hope that this will be well received by, by the government. And lastly, fatalities on the Mumbai suburban railway system. Now, this is a little known fact. Mumbai, as a city, witnesses 4,000 fatalities every year and an equal number of injuries on the suburban railway system. And this is certainly a cause not to ignore about, and very few people would research a topic like this. So we want to highlight, basically, this danger, this danger that every single citizen faces while traveling on the Mumbai suburban railway system and the sheer apathy with which railway authorities deal with it. So we are very excited about all these reports, and most of them are due to be published at the end of this month, at the beginning of next year, and we will certainly share copies with all of you. Thank you.
and we look forward to an engaging discussion. Uh, I invite Sri uh, Sudhendra Kulkarni to give his welcome remarks. Gives me great pleasure in welcoming Sri Ramesh Ramnathan and uh, Surendra Shivastava to ORF Mumbai. Both of them are coming here for the first time, <coughs> but certainly not the last time. I know both of them closely. In fact, uh, I met <coughs> Ramesh ji and Surendra ji for the first time together at uh, the office, the basement office in Baikala, when Lok Sattva was still a movement and not yet a political party. <coughs> and it was also the first time I met Dr. Jay Prakash Narayan. And the speeches I heard of Jay Prakash Narayan with JP and uh, Ramesh ji at that meeting were truly scintillating. And I learned a lot about uh, this whole urban reforms movement. <clears throat> Lok Sattva Friends may be a very tiny party uh, in terms of its electoral success so far, but uh, all those who know about the activities of Lok Sattva will agree that it has made a very important contribution to the debate on uh, clean governance, good governance, with special focus on urban governance. My <coughs> friend is already, my colleagues already introduced both of them, but let me tell you something about Sri Ramesh Ramnathan. Uh, he was the inspiration for Ashutosh Gowarikar's film Swadesh. Hmm? Uh, you know, <coughs> Abha told you that uh, he was in the very lucrative world of finance, high finance in New York and London. But both he and his wife Swati left all that and came back to Swadesh. And that story has been captured in the film Swadesh. In, <coughs> in the past few years, they have uh, been widely recognized as uh, both he and his wife as the best and most dedicated experts on uh, the issue of urban reforms. <coughs> So we are uh, pleased to have both them at this discussion. It will take ORF's own work in the area of urban renewal to the next level. <clears throat> My colleague Shilpa gave a short presentation on the work that we have done so far, but there's lots and lots more to do. India is rapidly urbanizing, <clears throat> but uh, good governance in the urban space is uh, sorely lacking and unless we take up reforms and people oriented especially oriented towards poor people in a very serious way we will have more and more disasters waiting ours is not just a platform to study issues but we also in our own little way try to mount advocacy on these reforms and uh, we will be greatly benefited by today's discussion. I now invite Sri Ramesh Ramnathan to speak followed by <coughs> a discussion between the two of them which will then be thrown open to the audience. Thank you very much. <coughs> 